Vinaka, Raka team and Tapati Fura, Nisambula Vinaka, Lola Vina. And greetings and uh, welcome to each and everyone uh, that are coming in live and are part of, uh, of this Talano. And so I um, wanted to extend a very warm uh, Fijian greetings uh, to you all joining in today. Nisambula Vinaka, this is, of course, is Fijian Language Week. And it's day one, Sing and Dua, and in our celebrations for Fijian Language Week. And uh, it's such a privileged uh, time for us, particularly those of us from Fiji uh, that are here in New Zealand for, for this wonderful privilege that we have, that the acknowledgement of uh, Wasawakaviti and being able to celebrate it with the New Zealand government and her people uh, to have a whole week of celebrations uh, this week. So we welcome you. Uh, and welcome each and everyone that uh, have joined us uh, this afternoon. Uh, and um, as much as uh, we would like uh, to do this in in, uh, in Vosavagaviti, uh, we will also have to um, open up and, and, and allow others who are unable to understand and converse in Vosavagaviti to be able to be part of this uh, also uh, today. So um, on behalf of the Wellington Fiji, uh, language committee, the, the Fijian committee, and the Fiji community committee, and of course our lovely guests uh, that are here with us, uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Tim Kong, uh, we want to extend a very, very, very uh, warm Wellington uh, greetings to such a wonderful afternoon in Wellington. As they say, you can't beat the weather in Wellington. Uh, you can't beat it on any day, nice day or day like this. Um, we are always number one for uh, for weather in, in New Zealand. Nisambula vinaka, turanga na marama, kemuni kede na sema tiko mai, ena awa ni vei tala nongo, tiki tiko ni nonda maro taka na madha wa niposa koka viti, ena yanu ya nuto toka ngo wa Aotearoa, e New Zealandi, New Zealandi lewu. Katiko kinango na nonda vula ni ndokai, o Mr. Tinkong, mai na yanu ya nuto waka turanga, or New Zealand lai lai, or small New Zealand as they call it in Kandavu. The Baba Bina Vinaka Kina and Yakavi Vinaka Nikua, Ni Rauni Tiko Batike Kenda na Turanga Go Mr. Tim Kong, and Yakavi Vinaka Nikua. Nanonda Veta Lano and Akana Ulutana, Meva Kaoni Sana Wilika Tiko, Kaoni Nareda Tiko, and then Abukuni Kanavara Songoni Vata Indua in Davandavo, a Tiko Kanavara Songoni Vata, Naitukutuku Ranitori Rao, Mainave. Vale ni maroro eso ina vea sa ivurumula. Ka tuku ni tuki na nakenda i tuku tuku. Ka rao rao veke nda menda na lako ngai na ndua na kia na vata vata. Ka rana lai tuke li tuki na na i tuku tuku baka songo ni menda le tikenda na ita uke imai viti. Maina vea sa ivurumula tale eso. So thank you for joining us this morning and the session. This we have a one hour slot for this session here this afternoon. And so we are going to start with a small lotu. Uh, and we have uh, Reverend uh, Sitiveni Tuinosau uh, here with us. Uh, will um, lead us uh, in a uh, small, uh, short prayer and lotu uh, to acknowledge uh, the way that uh, that we do things uh, properly um, in in the Fijian uh, culture uh, today. So, Ms. Ambula Vinaka Se, Ambula Vinaka Tautala Siti Vinavalevu, Na Nomuni Siamatiko Mai, and Single living in provides stability to my well-being. Sembaranga ni una wasia indona ibanga bagaya lo ina kabibina kani singa nikua au kerea menda na adubo sobo mandanga ina masu. Before I will share a word for us this afternoon, let us all bow down with a word of prayer. Turanga chova na ni mami kalou na kalou lebu na kalou koko na kalou ganga. Mami Bagavina Vinacani, Tabuti Kona, Madawani, Bosa Bagaviti, my Viviti Coin Duana Kena, was a was in a program when a cabby Vinagani singer than die. Kimami Indova to make him a me take a bove, Kimuni. 
Waro meki mami na rongo dana no muni wosa meki mami vaka iwa ngata kikina ninge iwa kaya ngata kanga na yango ngelengo na kena vaka leledi na ituku tuku ni vina kata meki mami rongo dha ki mami sa vaka tambu eta lenga kina na prokara mungo vaka talenga kina na loma ni mada watu vokongo na ni mami kalo e na bono lebungo atero na ni mami kalo ena buku ni kena baka yang ataki tiku kina na wosa baka biti ka baka bimbi ndo na sala ki mami na maroroi kina na ki mami tuku tuku ka ki mami maroroi kina na bei ka membaleta na ni mami bola ni mami mata bo vale ka baka usutu na kena ndo na sala me baka lelevi ni kina na ya kena baka tabulivi na ni mami wosa oni akadivi ki mami kina mbuli ki mami kina ena ndele ni buro buro ngo na ka wei tauke kani baka sulu miki mami watakina ena wosa baka biti ka rawa kina ni ndona sala mera buli dekina na lubei kima mera mai sudu ena bunongo ni sulandi so saramai tiko ena bei ibuli vevere so nani mami kalo ka kima mi baka bine bina kani baka rauta kindona ngauna me kima mi rawa ni buli dekina na 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 wosa baka biti mera rawa kina bei kima mi me kima mi kila na bunongo kima mi abu te kima kina na wale buna kabi bina kani singa de ndai na wale buna nomuni na beba kaya ngataki ni mami bata na nomuni loloma ena buku itisu na iba mbola na iba kala baka ya lo me mai nonda bata na kabi bina kani singa ni kuwa una ngandre ba me unando la batu kanga kina na nomuni bata kina kabi bina kani singa de ndai iba kai mbale mbale nga rosa ngapulu kandua chini wasile bui chini kawadu la tikine rosa ngapulu kandua bato ngangwa na kena rorongo na mati kena mbola eto kanga na tembe ni musumu o kwa nga ibina kata ena kania na veta di bwana our bible reading um, this afternoon is taken from the book of uh, proverbs uh, chapter 18 verse 21 death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat it da rongo to sagati kon na ulutanga lebu enda mai tabota tiko kina na mada wani boso baka biti na yamba kingo ro no ndolu ro sno bulkan dua Nongu bosa ai bakande ini nongu tiko binak. Ya talenga na uluta nga una ngandre ba me una vindo vikina baka lega lega na ka bibina ngani singa de dai. The theme of my sermon this afternoon is um the um, my language provides a stability to my well-being. Da rede tiko na itukutungo e bosa tiko ngo na buko Solomon ituno ko na mateke nambula singa ni tiko bina ke mumela. Na mateke nambula sanga ni tiko talebo endo na tamato. Na mateke nambula sanga ni tiko matanga bi setan. E tuku na tiko ko endo na tuku tuku. Tu na tiko ko na mateke nambula to kanga ngor na tebeni muso. Nda ro ngota tiko na ulutanga bi kenda na loma ni madango no ngu bosa i bakande ni no ngu tiko bina ka ken bale bale na ka bi wa se bi kenda na ka bi bina ni sikani ko na lo bi tenda ba ro na ka bi bina ni sikani ko na no mo bina to kanga ngor na tebeni muso na ka sanga ta buto tiko bale na ro As we have uh, heard uh, on uh, this um, Bible reading, death and life is in uh, is in the power of your tongue, not on your enemy eh, or on Satan. No, the power of death and life is in the power of your tongue. It's on the power of your tongue. Eto kanga ngori na te ngani guso. Kene mbale mbale niko bina kata na bina kaba kato sana bina. Raumanda kanin da tobi matitu. Na no mo ba kato tusa nga na rawon ni na bi sa uta kana mati kina bola. Bala tala ba yan na kasar ngay tukul tukul ni bola tamu. Na itukul tukul dola ba sa kato tukul kina na non dabi ba sa kina kabi bina kani singa nenda i itukul tukul ngani non dabi ba kana. Saro tama itukul na nakalubi chama sa chama sa beram beram mandani ko bosa totolo mandani ko bagrorong. Ana chama sa duo chinka di otuna tukul na na itukul tukul. Be slow to speak but be swift to hear. Kaya na buo na eruo kina nandaling nanda totok. Mula tala ba merawan nindo rongo na baka binaka na baka sarama ni ko prova kusa kongor na ko baka kusa ko tamay na bula sa ko tamay na ba? E ko tamay na binaka sa ko tamay na ba? E na toka nga na tiyempre ni musub kaya mabale ni ko siyempre rin yon tapu ta indo na wosa rongo na rawo mandelu kaya ko eruo tiko kina nandaling na kalunda rongo na baka kalunda kina kaya kaya tapo to ko etu pa tapo na kina kina. 
Obrambo tena loma ni madongo ndo talena na kenena ki se no wana ngani koti kenda bata mai na lube lube biti ndo tele tu wana kenena ki menda mai rongo da talena ki na na no no sa na ko nga ambulianga na loma langi kena burburu e ka tali na itukutuku bina ngo ne uluta na loma ni madongo ni lomba rungka ba ko ambulianga na loma langi kena burburu ngo mbulumbuli kanga na no no ko tali ki na biu na uluta nga nda reda tiku ni kena na loma ni madongo Nunggu bosa, ayu bahkan deh ini nunggu tiku bina. So nang kau nanti dulu ini nampak nanti tiku bina, kau bakat tahu tak ini lah buat dah rawata. Ah, so nang kau nanti nampak nampak nanti tiku bina, kau bakat tahu tak ini mereka na na bakat tangen deh ini buli, entah buli kena. Yo, entah ni sama, entah ni kori. Entah rumah ini kan na dah buat tuku nana bos ni kalau kau nanti dah nampak buli nak kalau lewat apa, tu nak kau nanti nunggu tiku bina ka. Na mati kena bula, tiko serang anggur nak tapi ni musuh. Siapa tahu lagi tiko nak keluar, na mati kena bula tiko ini labu. Siapa tahu tiko nak keluar, na mati kena bula, apa kata tahu tak kena mesti tiko ibal lagi siapa tiko ibit. Na mati kena bula tiko na bunuh ni nak nak siapa tiko mana kor. Orang ini, tiko na bangau kor, na mati kena bula tiko serang anggur nak tapi ni musuh. Kini malam malu bikin taru, na lu bikin tiko apa kor orang nak kau bina kan isi nendai. Ena bunuh itu, lu kumpul na bunang gune turang na bunyi baru letui kambai nunggu balik lebu bunuh besar na bunang gune meramam balik na rokot itu keti. Ena bunyi masih, mata ni tu view akan ingangkan na tua batal. Dapa kalau orang nak kabi bina kan isikan dendai bunuh apa ngan dasi amati kau mekina. Sebi kau ni nanggal orang tu na katuk katuk ni go, obi apa ngan dasi kita. Na nomuti kau bina kau, apa kata tu tak kisah ngan nabo bosan kau bosan tak. Ena tikir lagi lagi kau ngan rebah biu untuk lapar rau kira na nolong tapi bosan kena singan ikuah. Saya nunggu masuk ni nak bawa kelonggan atau tak ikhlas nak kelu, tak bawa kelonggan atau tak tali tiko ngan nama lawan ibu so bawa binti, entah tak bawa tiko ni entah pun oleh bungo atero. Kira ngan dahulu semua tulang ngan masuk, terus bawa head for a word of prayer. Turang ngan kima misi ngan indah dengan apa? Nak bawa binti nak kabik. Binti apa kali pun nunggu ni binti lebi nak kabik binti ngan isi ngan dendai entah bukan ni nunggu ni tuku tuku. Kemu ni nimbulnya nak lama lagi kena buru buru ngoi nak nunggu ni bosa. Saya rasa turang ngan tuku nana. Nombor ni bosan, saya nak cun indu indu, saya nak baca tiga buku, saya bukan kau yang bosan. Erau satu kau baca nak kalau kau yang bosan, a sa kalau kau yang bosan. Nak bosan, oi kau mungkin. Kau baca kau mungkin bina kata nak kau membeli tanah bina kau ni mami bola, ni mami mata bobale, ni mami tiga tiga. Saya nak baca tahu tak kita lena, nak kau kau mami baca tu sa tahu tinggal, saya nak tiba ni musuh kita. Kau baca kau mungkin bina kata nak bina kau, nak kau mami baca tu sa nak bina kau. Kau baca kima mimi, bina kata nak tahu doko, kima mimi baca tu sana tahu doko. Kau baca kima mimi nak kata tanya nak bola, kima mimi nak baca tu sana bola. Masa aku bina kata baca kima mimi nak masa aku, masa aku ni baca bah kalau ngat taki, masa masa aku ni baca lebih ti, masa aku ni baca sotabi. Ni mami buat tanah lom ni lama, enak buku itu isu naik baca bola. Emeli, bina kata salah balik. Bina salah balik bu, bina kata salah balik bu, naik tala tala city beni tuin asau. Uh, thank you for that powerful uh, words that you've shared with us uh, this afternoon as we kick off this wonderful session that we have. Uh, Talatala City Veni Tuinasau is actually the president of the Viti Wellington Community Association or the Fiji community in Wellington. So we appreciated uh, your sharing. So coming um, now, um, time is, is, is the essence. So we are going to uh, move on uh, very quickly with our session. So we have our guest here today um, to embrace us with the theme of this week, my language provides stability to my well-being. And uh, here with us is Mr. Tim Kong from the beautiful island of Kandavu uh, to, as our uh, guest speaker, uh, also the expert on the subject that we are going to talk about today. I will not go into it. I will let uh, the man uh, and our guest of honor to uh, to go through it and in also introduce uh, himself uh, for today. And just before I hand it over to him, very quickly, for those of us listening in uh, today, this afternoon, uh, if you have any question, and please, I encourage you to ask a questions. The best way for you to get your question through to me is to write it down and send it through the chat button. Even if you're on this Zoom link, or if you're on Facebook Live, write your question down and just put it in the chat button. We have eyes on the ground that's gonna read every single questions that come through those two channels. So please, kere kere, biu maikina na nomnitaro, say comment 
or ni vinakata me natave talanoa kine niko. So we'll have some time uh, for sa uh, further talanoa and to for Q and A at the towards the end of this session. But for now, ni sambula vinaka, Mr. Tim Kong, and uh, kavi vinaka ni kuwa over to you as uh, Grammy Den would say at the National Stadium uh, in Fiji. Vinaka. <clears throat> Oh, Vinaka, uh, Matthew, and thank you very much for that kind greeting and for your words, Reverend, as well. Um, Bula Vinaka, everyone. Uh, my name is Tim Kong, uh, and I am the program manager of the Pacific Virtual Museum. Uh, my father is from, uh, the, as was said, the beautiful island of Kandavu, known for many things. Um, but uh, the picture, the background that you have here is uh, a photo my brother took in 2009 of Nalotu, which is our father's Father's village. Uh, he is uh, his uh, originally um, from born in Nalotu, but is uh, Fijian Chinese. His grand his father was uh, emigrated to Fiji from China many years ago, uh, and he, like many um, Fijians, uh, has come to Aotearoa. Uh, he went my met my mother and uh, my siblings. Uh, two of us born here, and two of us born in uh, Southeast Asia, where my parents worked for a number of years. Um, so yeah, my uh, my role at the Pacific Virtual Museum is to uh, pilot project is to lead all of the various parts of work that we do. Uh, my colleague uh, Taputakura is here as well. She is uh, the engagement manager for our project, uh, and her and I, along with Ulu Afesi, uh, is our content analyst. Um, have uh, the team behind uh, the site that we're going to demonstrate today. Um, so in the way of a talanoa, whilst I'm talking about the project, um, as Matthew has said, please just ask uh, any questions or comments. Um, this will be um, a live demonstration uh, using the site that we go through. Uh, so if you had any thoughts or comments or things you wanted us to use the site for, please just let us know in the, in the comment box. So um, before I jump straight into the site, just a little bit of background on our, our project. Uh, it's called the Pacific Virtual Museum Pilot Project. Uh, it's, a, it's a two and a half year funded project by the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade in Australia uh, and implemented by the National Library of New Zealand, uh, where us three are situated here in Wellington, uh, but in also implemented in partnership with the National Library of Australia in uh, Canberra. And the aim of the pilot project was to explore what it was to uh, or what could be done to improve and make visible and accessible the digitized cultural heritage uh, of the Pacific for people in the Pacific and of the Pacific. And uh, what what that means in the detail behind that, there's lots of different layers of detail, but uh, in the first essence, it's um, many museums, galleries, libraries and archives hold uh, cultural heritage of the Pacific. And uh, that includes institutions in the Pacific as well as beyond the Pacific. Uh, many of them have digitized that content and have it available in catalogs uh, or on their websites uh, for people to view. And one of the things that we wanted to bring together was to make that process easier for people of the Pacific to navigate and find. Um, often, if you use Google uh, or a search engine that you might use, um, the, the databases behind that are huge, obviously, things like Google are searching the web, um, but they uh, are built in such a way that content that's held inside gallery li galleries, libraries and museums won't be visible uh, straight away. So uh, we set out to, to focus on the um, records, the public records of institutions and galleries, libraries, archives and museums, um, both in the Pacific, but also outside the Pacific. Uh, and to bring them together on one site, or um, more importantly, not to bring copies of the actual data, just to present what we call metadata. So it's just um, the things like the title, the description, and, and small images. So in that sense, we are not uh, a repository. What, it, what that means is we don't store or hold any of these original um, records. Uh, the content partners do, and we'll demonstrate that as we go through. Uh, and we essentially work like a Google. We point you to uh, the source, uh, the content partner, um, sorry, the source records on the content partner site when you're navigating across our site. Um, I think the other thing that has been interesting in this pilot project is we had the opportunity to explore uh, a number of things, what it means to be digitized, uh, and also more importantly for us, what, what when we say cultural heritage, how do we define that? Um, because galleries, libraries, archives, and museums are 
predominantly a Western construct. Uh, they're designed around the written word. And we've really enjoyed exploring what it is to uh, you know, recognize that Pacific cultures are based on oral traditions. They, um, our stories are told through song or through dance or through um, food preparation or through sport. Uh, and what is it to hold that sort of storytelling or that sort of narrative um, in a different way? Um, and so what is it to show potentially more video or more audio around the things that define us as cultures uh, and the pieces that um, enable us to connect? And lastly, I think the thing that's been really exciting for us to explore is when we say uh, the um, digitized culture and heritage of the Pacific, when we are using uh, content that's mostly held inside Western uh, based institutions or Australasian ones, we are uh, by definition um, seeing the Pacific through the lens or through the viewpoint of those institutions. And so we've really um, uh, sort out, uh, you know, um, and want to present the cultural heritage uh, and that narrative of the Pacific as told by Pacific people. Um, one of the great things, I think, as we demonstrate the site in a wee bit, is that as you start to see content partners who are in the Pacific, very small institutions or even individuals or community groups, and their um, records held alongside big institutions that we um, would see here in, in Aotearoa or in the United States or Europe, what is it for that straight away to rebalance the narrative that the voice of someone like Tumeli in Suva is just as valid in terms of the records that we show as the ones that are being presented by Auckland Museum. And I think that's a very powerful opportunity to help uh, reframe the narrative of uh, what is the Pacific, how we define it and how we see it. Um, so though with those three things or those couple of points in there, I'd just like to go and we'll start the demonstration. I think the other key thing as well, uh, when we talk about um, what is the Pacific, uh, what we um, have defined it with, with our um, steering group and our content partners, is when we say Pacific, we mean, uh, broadly speaking, the areas of Melanesia, Micronesia, and Polynesia. Uh, so what that means is it excludes, uh, for our intents and purposes within the pilot, uh, cultural heritage from um, locations like uh, the Philippines or the Aleutian Islands or Japan. Um, so I'll just reframe the screen so it's right in front of me. Sorry, I'm just having to move my screen around a little bit. Um, hopefully you can still all see that. Not yet. Um, here we go. Okay. So. Um, yeah, sorry, I'm just trying to line it up so that I'm staring at the camera <laughs> as well as I'm staring at my screen. So this is our website, digitalpacific.org. Uh, the Pacific is spelled P-A-S-I-F-I-K, uh, and that was a very clear nod to um, an indigenous uh, language uh, in the Pacific. One of the problems was that when we had this Talanoa about what a name should be, was that uh, you know if you say we should use an indigenous name there are, or an indigenous language, there are obviously hundreds of indigenous languages across the Pacific. So we've chosen to use the Tok Pisin spelling of the word Pacific, um, purely on a basis of numbers, actually. There's <laughs> more Papua New Guineans than arguably all the rest of us combined. Um, but we also wanted to acknowledge, as I said earlier, that this is just metadata, it's just digital, uh, and that's what it is. Um, so the site, um, we designed it um, to do a number of things. One, the first instance, um, I really wanted the site to reflect something of the Pacific back at people using it. We didn't want a site that was just all white or all neutral. Uh, we also, secondly, wanted to show locations in the Pacific. Um, we don't currently list, as I'm scrolling down here, all of the locations in the Pacific. Um, and um, some of the the names might be different for example we don't we don't label french polynesia we have identified each of the five archipelago of french polynesia and and framed it like that um and the second thing is we wanted to and what i really love about this design i'm grateful for our designers for working on it we wanted to actually highlight the individual locations and the beauty of them and the shape and uniqueness of them because if you are from guam if you are from tuvalu if you are from tonga you will know these shapes by definition of living there or, or being from there. But mostly in our Western way, when we think of the Pacific, it's mostly a big blue ocean that we fly over, or it's the single island that we fly to for our holiday. 
Uh, and what we wanted to do with just this page and this, this design on the desktop is to highlight that each of these locations are beautiful, unique. Uh, and if you're of those places, they are home and we wanted you to see home straight away. So in our case, uh, we want to focus on Fiji. Uh, and if we go to that page, uh, we have um, each of the pages has a greeting in that language as much as we've been able to. Uh, you can search only uh, when you're on this page, you're only searching for content that is in some way tagged Fiji. Uh, and we currently have um, 30, uh, 31,171 uh, items tagged Fiji. Um, the filtering, which we've designed here, is hopefully quite quick and easy to use. Uh, we filter by media type. Um, I'll just open that up and you can see. Uh, so there's text, there's objects, images, maps, audio, video, and other. And again, what we have to do uh, is we can only use the, the, the metadata that is provided by our content partners. So that's what we're presenting there. Um, and, and I guess what that means most importantly is we don't curate. We're not manually putting all of these records in this field or in this in this page. Um, we are using relying on the metadata that comes from our content partners. So I've just selected video here. And if you scroll down, you're now only seeing videos that have in some way have a tag Fiji from them. Uh, and you'll see straight away one of our content partners is Coconut TV, and they have obviously a lot of video and audio content. And we're really grateful for them for for sharing that and the stories and the narrative they bring to the Pacific. Um, if I go back to the filtering really quickly, if I want to also look at uh, objects, uh, I can click that out or I can just choose uh, the options, the, the tick boxes. So let's just look for objects. Um, I'll do that again there. Um, now I'm looking at 1400 objects that are tagged in some way with Fiji. As you can see here, the Te Papa here in Wellington holds a 50 cent piece, uh, not that 50 cent, a actual 50 cent uh, from, um, <laughs> the, the, from Fiji. And they also hold a number of other objects here as well, including here straight away, you can start to see Auckland War Memorial Museum and other content partners. If you see down here, obviously not all of, again, we're just relying on metadata. So not all of the records have an image. Um, so they don't always look as you know, as beautiful as some of the ones below, um, but the records are still there. Um, another quick way of seeing just content partners is to select the options here. Under this tag Fiji, here are all the different content partners that hold a record. So Trove is a content partner in Australia, uh, ABC, uh, Australian Broadcasting Corporation, uh, CocoNet, a number of other smaller ones as well. Some of them have quite a few, some of them have um, very little. Um, Tups, I'm just conscious of time. Are there any questions to answer? I can't see anything. <laughs> no questions to answer so far. Um, I've got one. Um, who are your Pacific, oh, Fijian based um, content partners? Are you yep. able to mention some? Yep. So our Fijian, I'll just go back to the, the home page um, and I can actually scroll down. So if you're exploring the home page again, uh, we have, and again, this is. Um, our content partners page. The two, actually at the moment, we only have one from Fiji, I think. Uh, oh, sorry, two, two sorry, my bad. Uh, we have, uh, I'm just trying to scroll across. To no, three, three. Three? You know this answer already. You're just throwing me softballs yeah. here, Tops. <laughs> so yeah, we do, well, I know I'm remembering two of them off the top of my head. One of them is the this uh, foundation based in Fiji uh, who have, um, and again, if you go to their website, so if we talk mm -hmm. about our content partners, we always try to shine a light on uh, um, on our content partners as they come up. So this is kind of a really uh, very simple web page that centers them or a section of the site. So on the site, we always uh, have a, um, a, a link to their page or um, an email as well. Now, not all of our content partners have a website. Uh, we can talk to one of those as well. So they may not have it there. But again, here, the same interface. If you're now searching, you're only searching in the Nangangas Giving Foundations records. And at the moment, we only have 12 records. Uh, they, as well as being a charity, commissioned uh, a director to do a, a, a film series, which they've posted on YouTube of um, the traditions of singing in Fiji. Uh, and it's just a really lovely way, as I said at the start, you know, most of our libraries uh, and museums won't have uh, a shelving space for where songs are kept, uh, unless it's in a physical recording. But these, this set of interviews here 
uh, and videos that were created for them uh, are quite lovely in their own way. Um, and we present them as they are. I'll just use this as an example of um, of what looks what it looks like when you select an item. So when you select an item, uh, you you get the thumbnail, um, you get a little bit of the metadata from them, uh, and uh, some of the details. As I said earlier, we always point the you back to the source. So if I click this link, in this instance, I'm going to land on YouTube because we are pulling the metadata from YouTube. Um, and that's where you'd watch the movie uh, or the, the footage. We always point you back to engage with or to play or to listen or read the content on the source uh, or the content partners site. Um, um, we just had one question come through from Leota. Yeah. What is one of the challenges your department faces in relations to the work you do, please? Uh, I think one of the challenges is um, what what are the institutions or what are the groups that have digitized content? Um, because we can only show content that is digitized and then is then is publicly accessible in some way on 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 a web platform on a stable web platform. So you either have to have a website where we can archive or pull data from, or you have to be using a platform like a YouTube, uh, a Flickr or a SoundCloud where it's you know you're, you're paying a either paying for it or there's a different construct around data ownership you know if you upload content to youtube it is now therefore in google um, and so there's a that's a for some institutions there's a tension there uh, for some smaller institutions actually that's where it is uh, or it's what what all they can access and i suppose one example of that which isn't fijian in this case but it is um, useful to prove the point so the solomon islands national museum don't actually have a website um, they are based in Honiara. Um, when we met with them and spoke to them about what would this, you know, if you were comfortable using YouTube to, if you had content, um, you could do that. And we could, for us, from a technical point of view, it's easy to, to, to bring your metadata in. They went away and did that, and um, they've digitized um, eight, eight records, uh, eight of their short films. Um, and just, again, just on YouTube, uh, we really recognize that that's not preservation. But we also acknowledge the fact that the Solomon Islands National Museum have done this uh, in the way that they can and that the way that they are capable of doing. And it speaks to that point I said earlier that um, to recenter a Pacific narrative within uh, Pacific Island based institutions, constructs and capacities, we have to acknowledge that they're not they're not going to be able to do it the way we might be able to do it in Aotearoa or, or in some of the Western nations. Um, um, so that's probably one big challenge. I think the other one uh, Liotta is uh, around what is it uh, when we look at some of these digitized records and we look at some of the metadata on them. Uh, I think for most institutions, um, visibility and accessibility is a is a positive and a plus that they want to do. But it also, if your content is visible and accessible, it actually opens you up to be critiqued. It opens you up to be challenged. And there's a tension there because actually a lot of our most of our cultural heritage institutions. Um, you know, they, they are doing, and all over the world, they're doing the best they can with the funds they have to deliver the best outcomes. A lot of the records in these institutions will have been gifted to them or have been within them for over 100 years. So to be challenged because of something that was brought into your institution or labeled in your institution in the early 1900s <laughs> can open someone up uh, personally. Uh, but you know, I think our, as our institutions are evolving into this space around what it is to 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 make their content more visible and accessible, uh, I think that's a really powerful opportunity to have a talanoa about. Actually, actually, this shouldn't be this; it should be that. And what does it mean to shift those those labels and those narratives? But also, I think to recognise that a lot of our labels uh, are of their time, uh, and for me personally, what is it to say that? Um, an institution should go back and rewrite all of its metadata from the perspective of 2021 because actually in 2050 or in 100 years time it might be a different perspective again how often do you keep rewriting the past i think is an interesting conversation um, i don't think you can uh, rewrite the legacy of the past by just rewriting the metadata <laughs> uh, in, in terms of the world we live in now um, 
Um, Tim, there's, Jeremiah just also sent through a comment. Hopefully there'll be more partners from Fiji and especially from the Institute of Itoke Language and Culture. Did you just want to share um, to Melly's um, series uh, of videos? Yes, I can pull up to Melly's one. Now, one of the things with um, uh, that Fiji page, I'll just uh, jump to it here. When we, before I go back to Tamales, when we when we say there are uh, thirty one thousand records, oh sorry, I'll get rid of the the filtering. When we say this Fiji page has thirty one thousand records, that doesn't mean that there aren't other records that might be uh, have Fiji content, because actually what we can only do in this page is look for the phrase. Fiji or Fijian or a subset. Uh, if you're searching the whole site, you will find other records that maybe don't have the word Fiji or Fijian in them. Uh, and so Tumeli is uh, a small example of that. Tumeli is based in Suva. He's actually a graphic designer that we've got to know a little bit. Um, and his on his YouTube page, he had created a number of records um, around uh what was the experience uh for fiji before the arrival of the europeans and he actually uh engaged with um, the principal cultural office at the ministry of italki affairs um, recorded those um, videos in his own space uh, and um, uh, then as a graphic designer <laughs> created the videos um, and, and post them there so we were again as i said right at the start really interested and really um pleased that he was um, comfortable with us sharing his content because it's a perspective that is again centered in the Pacific uh, focuses on a, uh, an expert in the field someone within the Itake division in Fiji uh, and it's uh, in terms of the digitized aspect is very easy for us to access in terms of sharing this content from YouTube uh, and again we always put um, the 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 user in, in onto the space where they hold the content um, in that direction. Um, sorry, oh, you go with Sally's question. Sorry, Tops. No, Shelly, do you want to ask your question? <laughs> well, Tim, thank you for that. Oh, my question was more around how do individuals or organizations in Fiji, should they wish to, um, share their of their records with uh, Digital Pacific? Um, yeah, the, the, it's relatively simple in that it's an email to myself or Tapatu. Uh, in the little about page here, um, we, we sort of frame how, uh, oh, sorry, I'll just move my tab, not the about page. There's a section here called become a partner. Um, and I won't just read it all out, but our main aim with this is that we want to lean into what is it to make it easy for uh, community groups, institutions to share their stories. So our scope is cultural heritage, but as we said earlier, we've made that intentionally quite broad around um, the different Pacific definitions of what is culture and what they value. Um, and again, the, 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 in terms of the digitized aspect, it's these three framings here. The content has to be digital, it has to be online, uh, and it needs to be publicly available. Um, and that's kind of it, really. Um, we have a small letter of participation um, and we have a, a contract around metadata uh, uh, and how it's used just to ensure that, you know, both parties understand how we're going to use your metadata and that there's no risk to either party or how that's used. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, in the case of Tumeli, he's just an individual. Uh, if it was a community group or a, or a, um, a small college or a, a language group putting together content, um, I think one of the things with that model, it's it's also really leaning into how um, community group community groups um, have a voice and an authenticity that maybe is a different perspective from a big uh, cultural heritage in institution, but arguably is just as valid. Um, and I'm segueing here because I can see Leonie's comment in the <laughs> in the questions, because one of the things, um, uh, as Leonie has pointed out, and as I've sort of referenced there. Sorry, sorry, Shelley, before I jump away. So really, really in a real simple way, if you have content that fits our scope and if you are happy with uh, that becoming a partner, please just email us. Um, I suppose the key thing is there is once uh, any group or institution is um, comfortable with the contract, um, we do all the work of harvesting. Uh, so we don't expect uh, any institutional group to do more work just for us. We will always only reflect 
what work you're already doing in the online space. So in the case of Tumeli's work, um, we're just harvesting from his YouTube content. We, he's not creating anything new for us, if that makes sense. So we will only ever reflect. Uh, and that's the same for the big museums and libraries, as well as is for community groups. We only ever reflect the work you have uh, digitized and already available in public. Um, so yeah, please, please do reach out to us. <laughs> um, I think, yeah, sorry. And to go to what um, Leone has said in the comments there, which is that um, sometimes metadata is incorrect or incomplete. Uh, are there ways in which Digital Pacific enables a way for people to raise corrections to existing metadata from institutions? Uh, and yeah, one of the things we realized really early on, particularly with our galleries, libraries, and museums metadata, is that it is often incorrect or of its time. Um, one of the things, though, we realized we um, we can't edit any of the metadata. <laughs> so how, how do we create an item or a way in which um, someone viewing the site can um, add their own knowledge or share their own content? Um, and so one of the ways we did this uh, was to create a function called user contributions. And I suppose as an example of what this means, I, you know, for us, uh, one of the things we, we said to, um, you know, the example of a family, you know, that when you, when you gather together for Christmas, there's always more than one way of cooking that family dish, you know, Nana, Bumbu has a way, auntie has a way and your mom has a way. Uh, and so instead of arguing about which is the only way to prepare that dish, uh, you end up having three of the dishes at the, the family gathering. And so that sort of little mental model for myself was what we're trying to do with this user contribution functionality. Because um, at the moment, and it's very small, we've only got 17. So we're hoping, as some of the people, as we walk through this, um, and I'll, I'll, I'll grab Rooka's actually, because it's a really lovely example. So Rooka is, um, this photo, this record is held at the Alexander Turnbull Library. Uh, it is a photo of the sugar mill in Lotoka, taken by Whites Aviation uh, in approximately 1949. It's, an ex it's a really good example of many of the types of photographs and images we have. But that, that there, as you see there, is all we have. That's all the story there is around that image. And with this user contribution feature, Rooka has come along and said this quite lovely small piece of, of um, her own personal experience, which is, I used to go to the kindergarten by the Lotoka sugar mill back in the 1990s. When the mill was in production, I remember a sweet smell coming from the mill. And I think there's straight away, there's a lovely piece of uh, a different narrative you know a different little piece of of insight into this record and so this functionality that we've built um, called contribute your story um, means that anyone else could come along and contribute something else as well so if i click contribute your story here uh, this is just a guided form which anyone can use uh, which says you know takes us through explaining what it is sharing your thoughts and memories and stories um, and you go through. And I guess our main intents for this site is that it is about creating a more interesting experience for people that come beyond. Um, but it could also be used, and it's exactly the same form uh, as the Oni has said, where you could actually correct a piece of information and say, actually, it's called this. In my village, it's called this, or in our village, we, we say this. Um, and what we do here um, is we ask you to share your story. We have some terms and conditions about that to read through. When you type your name, uh, the name you can choose to have it, we've tried to make the privacy part of the process. You can have your name publicly displayed or you can just choose to be anonymous. Um, you add your email. We never publish your email, but what we need that for is in the back end to, um, if someone challenges it uh, or if an uh, institution wants to connect with you, um, they can. But critically here, and, and, and this for us was really important, if you do not wish to be contacted any further about this story, that option is there. Because one of the things we want, wanted to do was to allow Pacific people to, to, to contribute a story, but also not feel like they were beholden to or, or needed to engage anymore. Um, because this content that you're providing, which is just text, um, importantly only stays on our website. It is never directly linked with the content partners uh, metadata. So what that means is you own it. You will always own it and you trust us to hold it and present it uh, kind of like a Facebook post, I suppose. 
Um, but if an institution wants to update their metadata with your knowledge, they have to engage with you to build a connection with you to understand uh, your, your wishes and desires around how they want that knowledge to be used. So content partners cannot just take this, your knowledge, and make it their own in their records. And I think for us that was really important, that uh, honouring our uh, an ownership, really, of, of this knowledge and story. We have a couple of fields here um, around your place. Um, what we wanted to do is to recognize that your place could be many things for Pacific Diaspora. Is it the island in which the, the photo is set, Tonga, Fiji, wherever? Is it where you are now uh, or living, you know, but you might be living in, in, in Utah <laughs> uh, and you want to acknowledge that, or you might be living in Europe. So the place thing, I suppose we lent into that concept of Turanga Waiwai, of your place to stand, and your, you choose that um, in terms of that labeling there. Your story title and your description is very simple uh, and you fill out that form. It's a free text field, <laughs> so it can be as long or as short as you want. Um, and when you click next, I won't walk through it all here, but you can, that data, you get shown the model of it um, and the review button. And then when you post it, uh, we use a method called what we call post moderation. So like a Facebook post, when you post it, it appears there um, straight away it'll appear next to the record. Now, I know some people might be raising eyebrows at that point, but what we've lent, lent into is the a reality that um, uh, a number of things, one, we can control it under our terms and conditions, you know, if it is offensive or if it is, you know, a bunch of words that we don't want on the site, we can take that down quite quickly. This page that you're looking at allows us to do that. We see all the pages that are there, the stories as they go up. But really critically, what's important here, and again, is this content here is not actually physically connected or digitally connected to this content as held by Alexander Turnbull. And so it sits there quite differently. While you're looking at it, it looks like it's on one page. They're in different spaces, if you will. Um, and we hope uh, if someone was to come along and contribute another piece of knowledge around the Lotoka Sugar Mill or their experiences, Matthew, I know you from the west western side. Maybe you have some personal memories of that. Um, you could you could add them there as well. Um, and if I go back a page and we scroll to some of these, there are some really, uh, and this is a good example. Um, we don't translate for the sake of translation. If you want to write it in Bowen or in uh, Chamorro, uh, tell that story, uh, share that story. Um, this example here, and I'll keep scrolling down. I think one. Nah, up. Up. Watson's one to make sure that he wrote it oh, didn't write okay. any bad words. <laughs> <laughs> so this is uh, from Tapatu's colleague, Tapatu's friend, who wrote this in. My partner. Your uh, partner. Please writing it. If you guys, if there's anything that he said bad, please report it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so even the reporting this contribution is. Um, uh, it's not about us then being the judge and jury of whether it's bad or not. If you report a contribution, um, we essentially open a talanoa with the person who made the contribution, which is why we held the web, the, the email address. And we basically tried to support that talanoa as to whether or not, um, you know, what it is. Again, if it is straight up, yep, it's a whole bunch of swear words uh, or something that is derogatory or inflammatory or causes harm, we retain the right to take that down. Um, Importantly, though, if you have a different version of this, uh, this uh, record, you can contribute another one. Because I think what we are really trying to do with this construct is to recognize that there is no single version of the Pacific. And so what is it to create a space that allows us to see multiple versions of the Pacific and the narrative around a record or an item, you know, if it's an object. Uh, or an instrument, what is it to have many people tell different stories around how that, that instrument is used in their life? Um, if it's a photo, actually, that was my granddad, and we called him this, and it's, oh, I remember him as uncle so-and-so. So what we're trying to lean into here is that it's not, um, it's a place for multiple versions, for multiple stories to be held. And I think the power of it, I hope the power of it is often at the moment, this metadata here from the institutions, from the big museums, from the libraries, that is seen as the only version of the Pacific. And so our user contribution feature is what is it to see multiple versions of the Pacific and therefore to reframe, again, as I said at the start, some of this, the narrative of uh, the Pacific. 
So please, um, as you're using the site and searching for content and finding things, please add it. Uh, as Leonie has said in the chat, that includes saying, actually, it's not called this. This is what it should be called. Because straight away, that gives us, uh, we can, and it's happened already. There's been a number of things where people have said something and we've gone back to a content partner and they've updated their metadata as well. And that's a very powerful piece because that's now on the source uh, record as well. Um, Tim, there's a question from Jeremiah. I'm not sure if you've answered it. I think my question will relate to Leonie's question. Does Digital Pacific have a verification of contents or is it solely for the partners to verify? Uh, yeah, so again, um, Jeremiah, uh, it's not for, we, as I said right at the start, we're a team of three. <laughs> uh, we are always leaning on the content partners uh, and their structures around um, authenticity or veracity and their ability to update their content. And importantly, if they update their metadata um, because of conversation, either through this site or through other consultation, excuse me, um, we will always reflect that updated metadata, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, we absolutely lean on our content partners to um, do the work of verifying and authenticating all of their, their, their metadata that they share with us. Um, and that, you know, in the same way, we, we would direct people who come to us saying, you've got things wrong on your site, we will find out which records they're referring to and we would point them to uh, that, that institution or that group. To, to have a Talanoa and a conversation around what that is. Um, and just a comment from Leota, great having people to share their stories relating to the images or current information you have Personal, personalizes it more for a Pacific feel. Inaka, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, um, Jeremiah. <laughs> yeah, oh, thank you very much for the claps. Um, yeah, I think, um, and I'm conscious of our time almost running out here, but that for us is um, the, the really interesting part, that user contributions. Um, I'll just scroll to one example actually from Tapatu's mum actually, uh, which is really quite powerful. It was one of the first ones that came in, um, was uh, this record here. So this um, record here is, uh, this video is, um, hosted by, or shared by to us by archive footage shared by us by coconut TV. Uh, this is their blurb of around what it is. Um, again, just from the YouTube metadata. Um, but this lovely, really lovely story there. Um, and I'll just read it out in case the visual is not that good. But she said this video reminds me of my home in the Cook Islands. We used to eat the flowers of the pagonia. It has a salty taste. My auntie Tangi, who I used to live with, we used to pick up the petals and eat it. We were supposed to be weeding the garden, but we ended up eating the flower petals. This reminds me of my younger days having to go and weed the taro patch and to lay covers over the taro patch with dry coconut leaves. And what I love about that, not just the details and the senses and the smells and what it evokes, was that there's nothing in that archival video that tells that story. And, and um, if there wasn't this functionality, then, then actually, you know, Tapatu's mom might have talked to her about it, <laughs> but no one else would experience that and no one else would get that connection as well. And so I think um, it's for us in the construct of us being a pilot and exploring what it is to make visible and accessible. It's these little lovely moments that I really value because the more of these that we can share and put in front of people and how we increase our knowledge and our own narrative or owning our own narrative. I think that's really powerful, you know, um, most of history, I think, is told by the great events, you know, the great wars or the great chiefs. What is us for us to create a space in which, um, you know, people tell simple memories, but memories that bind us and define us. And I think that's a very powerful opportunity. So, yeah, we'd welcome any contributions um, and any thoughts on, on how we can improve this, but obviously any stories that you have and memories as well. Um, and yeah, I'm conscious of time, so I might just wrap up there, Matthew, and pass to us, <laughs> pass to you, because um, I'm conscious of people finishing. Vinaka uh, team, uh, wonderful, uh, wonderful sharing um, this afternoon. I'm, I'm, I'm very amazed. I'm quite amazed uh, at the, at the work that uh, you three have done and are doing. I've got, I've got quite a few questions, but I will save that. 
uh, I suppose this is something that even you know that the Wellington Fiji community can can um, capitalize on, and I look forward to arranging a session with our with our community and our three confederacy uh, to have a session with you, or perhaps a, a field trip, a community field trip to to your place at the National Library at some point uh, when when summer's around. Um, and, and even the children uh, as well. Um, but I'm conscious of, of time, and uh, we're just one minute from um, from two o'clock. Let me just point to three uh, important things here. I notice uh, that you're not just talking about the history, you know, collecting things about history, but you're also collecting stories of the now time, or contemporary stories, and that's that's encouraging uh, to know. Uh, and secondly, you are opening up. Uh, opportunities for others to correct or build the story or reaffirm it or or build around it uh, and that's that's very encouraging as Fijians uh, we are very we are an oral culture and I think this offers a new way of, of being able to participate and contribute to that stories as you said rightly in the beginning it's about retelling the narrative because a lot of these um, uh, media and a lot of these resources are kind of written in the Western mind or, or those or those explorers or whoever at the time have written it in, in the way they've, they've, um, they've seen it. And so I, I think it's encouraging uh, for us to kind of be able to contribute to that and, and just to, to make the story more complete by giving balance to uh, indigenous view of, of looking at it. And I think that's that's very uh, encouraging for it. And for someone who works at the university, you know, I've always kind of been wondering how do we capture all this PhD uh, research, the thesis uh, masters that were actually written and uh, used where they've used the Pacific uh, to, 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 to write the thesis and the stories that they've tell if there's a one shop where they can just go to, where our communities can go to and access those stories. I'm from Deumba and I know that there's two, one New Zealander and one Australian. They wrote the story of Deumba village and they got their PhDs out of it. And that has been my story all along that perhaps if we tell our story, we can, all Fijians can get PhDs uh, as well. So I think, I think you've, just, you've just kind of moved the bar up and, and made that uh, an amazing thing. And so I want to thank you, Tim. Personally, I want to thank you. You know, you're a son of a missionary. That's great. That's, that's, that in itself is, is testament of what you are doing now. I go back to Talatala City's message, you know, that power and life and death is in the power of the tongue. And, and, and you are, are doing something, you're contributing to, to that knowledge where our people can participate and access it more readily and easily. Now, they don't have to have a master's to be able to, to navigate through the database, the general database, just to find a story about, uh, about our people uh, and stories from the Pacific uh, in that sense. So uh, again, uh, for the one hour, obviously now we know that we need to spend at least half a day uh, with you and understanding how this um, how this work that you do, and it's, it seems like it's a very interesting thing, uh, and personally for me, uh, to be able to have a look at this, um, this website and how we might contribute to it as a community uh, as well. It's a fitting uh, activity for, for this week, given that it's the Fijian Language Week, which is uh, Wasavaka Viti. So I want to thank you again um, and, and uh, say Vinakavaka Levu to you, Tim, and we are very proud of you. We are very proud that you are from Fiji. And we are very proud that you're from Kandavu, especially for those of us in the Western of Fiji. Uh, so we look forward to be able to give our thanks to you in the proper Fijian way with one big tanoa. Uh, we'll give you the address after this and don't you say uh, decline the invitation. But anyway, for those of our viewers that are listening from in Vinaka Saravalehu, Na sema tiko mai ena kavi vina kani kuwa ena zoom bata kwa ena Facebook talenga go senga i kena itego bu kena matai ni nanda we tala no kena turu ngani kanda bungo o Mr Tim Kong ena kavi vina kani kuwa ni taka ni nda na sema tiko mai it's a wonderful week uh, there are lots of things uh, happening this week and so let me just put a plug here there is also a conference starting on Thursday it's called the Aotearoa Fiji research collective forum and it's also free for you to attend uh, you will uh, look for a calendar or it's probably being shared out uh, on social media now the only second one i want to say is that if you're from wellington city 
There is a Fiji and Melanesia vaccination day on Saturday at 1.30 p.m. If you haven't been vaccinated, if you've got one, please come. If you haven't got one, please come. If you've got three, do not come. Uh, stay at home. Uh, so um, come to Lower Hutt at 218 Lower Hutt, uh, High Street in Lower Hutt in the afternoon. You can have some roti and curry there. Hopefully see you there, Tim, uh, also on, on Saturday. So from the team here at the National Library out of, out of Wellington City on a nice great day, a day fitting for Zoom meeting, uh, and we wish you the best for the week as you engage and embrace with the Fijian Language Week or Vosavaka Viti, Mother only Vosavaka Viti this week. So from all of us, Nisa Mwede, Vinagavaka Lebu.